everybody, welcome to Tech Recycle, where we combine the latest neurotechnology with ancient wisdom to supercharge your brain. I'm Dr. Cody Rawl, your medical doctor confidant. So today we're gonna to talk about human-computer interaction and the rise of brainwave consumer wearables that will transform lifelong learning. We're gonna talk about social isolation and how that will be transformed through this human-computer interaction, how digital culture will inform lifelong learning. We're gonna talk about brainwave computer wearable technology companies and how these are going to converge to create devices to the likes that we've never seen before and the one book that you definitely should read in order to prepare yourself for this wave of change. The first topic of discussion is definitely social isolation from the use of technology. We've all seen it around the dinner table, at restaurants, at social gatherings. Everybody is just sitting around looking at their phone rather than interacting with e each other. Children are looking at tablets, playing games. Uh, their social skills are going out the window. What is going on? How can we increase social interaction through technology rather than decreasing our ability to connect with each other and the outside world? A big buzzword right now is augmented reality. Now how is augmented reality different than virtual reality? Virtual reality, you put on the goggles and you are isolated from the external environment. There's a whole world in here that you can explore on the internet, even social chat rooms that you can enter. But in terms of interacting with real life, everyday surroundings, you are even more excluded from simply just having them off and interacting with the world. What's so great about augmented reality is these would be see-through clear lenses and companies are already working on this, companies like Microsoft HoloLens that are demonstrating that we can have glass planes overlaid with digital information interacting with the everyday world. And this is going to completely change digital culture and lifelong learning. Imagine being able to walk around and instead of looking at your phone all the time for information, it pops up on a screen while you are looking at the surrounding world. Imagine how that changes education, lifelong learning. Imagine going on a field trip or just a walk around the city and you see a building and then up pops the history of that building, architectural information, who's been at that building, what that building is for. Uh, you could interact with other people and have information pop up about where you have met them before, what their name is, what their birthday is, uh, how you know them, uh, prior experiences, what you talked about before. These are all things, the digital information that can be overlaid in the real world. They call it the digital world, the augmented world on augmented reality. And technology is definitely getting to the point where we can uh, project this information on a lens. And 5G information speed will make the speeds possible to make this a reality. This is gonna completely change education. We're gonna be able to look at things uh, and learn in real time. It's gonna change lifelong learning. Imagine being a tradesman and working on machines. It could be electric cars in the future. Imagine someone that's been working on electric cars for 20 or 30 years and then you're about to retire and needing to download that information into educational content for the rest of the people at the, co the company. They can actually uh, create educational programs so that when people are working on electric cars, they can uh, see the person that had retired real time showing them how to actually twist this thing, adjust this thing, code that thing. It could be real time instructions when they're working on the vehicle in order to uh, fix problems that arise. That could be uh, an excellent example of lifelong learning within uh, trade skills. And you can imagine how that can translate into travel, education, and other jobs in which you can learn real time on the job, how to the jo do the job most effectively. And how is this going to relate to brain computer interface? Well, once we start interacting with machines, once we interact with augmented reality, once we started interacting with uh, artificial intelligence, we're really going to benefit from being able to uh, communicate simply on brainwaves. I know that sounds very sci-fi or way off in the future, but it's already happening right now. Look at StoryUp, a company that uses the Muse with virtual reality goggles in order to teach veterans how to generate positive emotions, having them uh, navigate through a virtual environment. Uh, these types of programs already exist. Imagine uh, an augmented reality program that responded to your brain waves to teach you different things like attention, focus, meditation. These are all programs that really could benefit humans going forward in interacting with technology. And the amazing thing is all these different companies popping up, creating 
brainwave wearables. They're really exploring different niches, figuring different things out, figuring out what the consumer responds to. All these different companies, Emotive, Macrotelect, uh, Neurosky, Muse, Brainlink Pro, uh, Omnifit, uh, all these different companies are creating technology that is really filling these different niches, whether that be for sleep, meditation, brain computer interface. This explosion of companies in the space is really going to develop different technological advancements that will contribute to the common knowledge and eventually coalesce into a few companies that are really going to have very powerful brain computer interface devices. I think that these things are coming and something that we should prepare for. And in the long run, we have companies like Neuralink that would uh, actually sew uh, electrodes within the brain through neurosurgery in order to increase the bandwidth of brain computer interface. I don't think that we need to go there yet. I think that there's plenty advances of advances between now and then uh, in technologies like what Mary Lou Jepsen is developing in open water where you use near infrared spectroscopy to uh, really get an fMRI like image of the brain in order to uh, really push forward brain computer interface before any need for surgery and high bandwidth. But these are all modalities that we're exploring. These are all modalities that will develop over time and it will be very interesting going forward to see how they combine to create very powerful brain computer interfaces that will allow us to interact with virtual and augmented reality in order to connect us and improve the digital culture, the digital landscape that will overlay the everyday world that we live in. This this is coming and we're going to really benefit from it. One of the things that we're definitely doing here in this community in Tech for Psych and on Muse uh, headband discussion boards and all this is preparing for this eventuality of brain computer interface becoming more prominent. We're really looking at the nuts and bolts of what are the ethics, what are, what are the uh, implications, what are um, the consumer expectations, what are the different niches that can be filled, what are the advances in brain computer face technology that are being developed. And I'm trying to keep uh, track of that on this channel, I'll bring it to you every week so that we can keep track, start cataloging, start reporting and raising awareness of what's going on here because it really is the next step of human capabilities to interact with AI and uh, deep machine learning directly through our brains. It's going, it's going to happen. And the one book that you should absolutely read and this is not a paid endorsement, I just love these guys so much, is Peter Diamandis and Stephen Kotler, The Future is Faster Than You Think. This book will completely blow your mind. Uh, they're not just covering brain computer interface, they're covering artificial intelligence, flying cars, longevity medicine, and a number of different topics. And the take home message is these converging technologies, this idea of uh, you know different brain computer interface wearables uh, converging into more powerful devices. You also have that in a more wide scale. You really have the convergence of different exponential technologies coming into play. Increased computing power, increased finances, increased interest in entrepreneurship, um, the ability to uh, crunch big data, uh, sensors, biotechnology, uh, research that's been done on the biological front. These are all coming together to create a fantastic future that we're moving in towards. And Peter Diamandis and Stephen Kotler do an excellent job of encapsulating it all. I would also recommend the audiobook in which Peter reads each chapter and him and Stephen actually have a conversation after each chapter about all the things that have happened before they've actually written the chapter, submitted it for publication, and the book being published. The first chapter is on flying cars and it'll absolutely blow your mind. And one of the things that uh, Peter said that really rang true for me and what I'm doing on my work for Tech for Psych is that at the beginning of the automotive industry, at the beginning of the airline industry, and now at the beginning of flying cars industry, there's always this explosion of companies in which a bunch of startups get started up and they're exploring different niches and uh, making individual technological uh, improvements in their niche and then eventually those companies being combined into larger, co larger companies, think like Ford or Boeing, in which they accumulate resources and make technology that's really punched through technology that affects all of us. So I'm really tracking and thinking about that as I watch these brain computer interface wearables. And I think that that's a, a trend that we're gonna see here in the coming years. And one of the very take home points of this book is that a lot of this stuff is coming in the next five to 10 years. It's happening a lot faster than what people think. And there are a ton of business, entrepreneurial, and world impacting opportunities to take a hold of. 
of if you are aware of what's going on in these technological innovative spaces. So I hope you enjoyed this talk about how we can transform the digital landscape, connect with it through brainwave and wearable technologies, and where to look in order to predict how these technologies are coming and have your own ideas about how we can utilize it to further the human potential. It's Dr. Cody Raw with Tech for Psych. Talk to you again real soon.